I'm Hannah, I'm a senior content strategist here at Connective3 uh, and I'm here to talk about my personal passion for content clusters. So I'm going to talk about three things that you need to know when you're starting to look at building a content cluster for your website. So a content cluster is literally what it sounds like. You sometimes might have heard it referred to as like a topic cluster or like a hub and spoke approach but basically what it means is that you have a central piece of content and then lots of pieces of content clustered around it on similar but different topics targeting similar but different keywords to really sort of drive authority and a lot of expertise into that one sort of central page. And what that means is that basically you're giving that one page a lot of authority, but you're also helping all the pages around it to rank. You're helping search engines like Google understand how those pages are connected, that you have a lot of topical authority in that specific cluster. And you can do this for as many different sort of clusters as you want, as long as you have the relevancy for your site, your brand, your website, whatever, to talk about that. So the first thing that I like to look at when I'm looking at content clusters is really going in on keyword research. Obviously that's always the first step, but I think a really important tip is keyword mapping. Especially on small sites, your talking about such similar kinds of content again like I said similar but different so you really want to make sure that you're not risking cannibalization you're gonna be talking about stuff that's so similar so you might have one keyword that's about I don't know cleaning surfers and one that's about preventing stains on surfers and those are two different things but they're quite similar it's very easy to target the same keywords accidentally twice so my personal tip for keyword mapping is I have an Excel sheet, super basic, conditional formatting. If there's any duplicates, it'll flag it. And I know right off the bat not to target a keyword twice because it's highlighted in red. Nice and easy, it means that I don't ever make the mistake. Second up is the sort of technical versus conceptual approach to a content cluster. So the ideal way is that kind of hub and spoke thing I mentioned before. We have like a central page and then lots of little bits of content branching off from it, all linked together so Google can see it, crawl it, understand it. Sometimes, realistically, websites can't do that for technical reasons, for any number of reasons, you can't have like that big central page and then lots of little pages off of it. That doesn't mean you can't still build a content cluster, you can't still show your expertise. It just means that even if everything is housed on like a blog or a guide section, you just have to be super on it with your internal linking so that Google can understand how everything is linked together. So a great tip for this is when you're briefing or writing your content, track which links you're putting in. It means a little bit more work when you're doing the initial sort of delivery, but when it comes to doing an internal linking review, you will thank yourself, believe me. It just means you can go back and see what did I put, what links, what links am I missing? You can just control F and find them on a list. Super simple, super easy. Tip number three is role playing your roadmap. So essentially take your entire customer journey and sort of role play your way through it. So a really nice way of thinking about a content cluster is that you want to answer everything that a customer or a user might have about your topic or your product or your service, whatever it is. So if you were brand new to it, to your website, what questions would you naturally kind of ask? What questions would you want to learn more about? What information would you need to take that next step to read more to convert? And then do you have content that answers that specific need? Even if only five people are searching for a term, if your website is, is still relatively small or if you're only looking for a sort of a relatively small amount of leads, then those five people might be huge for your business. And if you can create content in your cluster that is so targeted to that specific problem, that's your audience. You should meet them where they are. Um, and as long as the content is, is well written, you've got the right signals to Google, there's no reason it won't get seen, it won't get crawled, it won't get discovered, it won't move up the rankings. When you're thinking about your content cluster, really role play that whole journey start to finish and make sure you've got everything that you need. So that was a very quick guide to the wonderful world of content clusters. Um, if you want to know more about how we work as a content strategy team here at Connective3, then drop me a message here <laughs> or uh, hit us up on the website.